Okay, so um, I'm going to talk about uh, Postgres, obviously, um, but I'm going to try not to. Um, I am going to give you uh, some thoughts from my time working with databases, um, and it uh, occurs to me that uh, it's actually my birthday this week, and uh, it's a very nice time to, uh, to come to Paris when it's your birthday. But uh, what actually uh, that means is that uh, as of very soon, I will have been working professionally with databases for 30 years, <coughs> which is uh, far too long to usually admit to, um, but it seems appropriate under the circumstances. So uh, I've been working on PostgreSQL for the last 10 of those years, uh, but before that I did a bunch of other stuff uh, that, uh, that showed me a, a whole range of different things. And, and it's important to have a look at some of those things, what I learned along the way, uh, and that's actually controlling and directing my own priorities uh, as we uh, build Postgres and the future of Postgres. Uh, I am old enough to have uh, been involved with databases when they didn't use SQL, and uh, I can tell you it was quite painful. Uh, we had to hand optimize everything, and uh, my perspective on SQL is that it's a wonderful, wonderful thing uh, because it allows you to specify your access to data in a way that can be automatically optimized. And if you've written a database that's optimized for a one row or a 10 row system, and then some idiot puts a million rows in it, and you have to re-optimize every single query, that's probably not a good idea. And then when you get to a billion rows, and then you have to re-optimize everything all over again, that's a problem. So having a language that allows you to express what you would like to see and then let the database work that out is a genuinely wonderful thing, unless you want to spend all those hours hand optimizing them yourself, like I used to have to do. It's also a standard, which means that uh, it creates uh, quite a good job market, uh, and it also means people have choice. And that also is a particularly important thing. Now, the last point about SQL, uh, the reason why I like it, is that a lot of people don't know the types of things that you can actually do with it. There are things called window functions that allow you to write quite complex queries, uh, and also things like recursive SQL that allow you to search trees. So some of the early books on SQL pointing out problems with the language just no longer apply. That's my first thought. Uh, second, you will need transactions eventually. Cue the laughter. <clears throat> um, locking in production systems is particularly important, and one of the, the early things about Oracle 7 was that the non-blockable locking uh, allowed it to really rule that industry, and that's why a lot of systems now have got that same non-blockable locking. Uh, one of the other speakers uh, queued me up for the next point, which is that DDL locking is also critical in, in systems. And one of the major uh, criticisms of relational databases has been uh, a very strict schema has meant that extending your application while it's in production is really quite hard. And uh, if you look at some of the things that have been happening in Postgres is over the last few years, uh, we've been reducing the lock strength required for certain DDL commands to allow you to uh, add columns quickly, add foreign keys quickly, and, and we're going to do more in the area. So one of the, uh, the things to say is that um, where people say relational databases have these problems, uh, it was true, it's certainly true. What I'm here to tell you is that we have listened and we're responding to that criticism perhaps slower than you think should be the case, but we are responding. In terms of data modeling, um, what I've learnt over time is that uh, there's a great many ways to shape your data. Uh, if you're doing data mining, you'll find that second normal form is good. If you're writing a production system with lots of updates, then third normal form is good, or... Um, uh, and then if you're doing a, a data warehouse, you'll think that star schemas or multi-dimensional uh, models are also good. 
Uh, and then uh, there's a, a, a big push towards schemaless uh, models uh, recently as well. So across all of these systems, across all of my time, I can say that anybody that's saying one particular type of model is the only way to do it is probably wrong. Okay? Uh, and so if I sat here and said relational is the only way to do things, uh, I would assume that people would throw things at me. Um, and that's fair enough. So uh, I think that uh, a database should support multiple ways of representing your data so that you get to choose how your database works, not the person that wrote the database. A couple of other things. Uh, I've done some work with Teradata, uh, and actually, uh, as an early distributed system, uh, I learned quite quickly that there's a whole range of applications that you shouldn't write on top of a distributed system because they don't work. Uh, I wish I'd knew that before. Uh, I wrote those systems, uh, but one of the, the, uh, the types of system that does work quite well on a uh, distributed system is a business intelligence or a data warehousing system. And those systems have consistently shown over a number of years that they work well on distributed systems. So um, there's some thinking that I'm explaining here to, to show you the path that we've taken with development with Postgres and it, uh, just to sort of explain where things are coming from. <clears throat> uh, I worked as an enterprise architect for a while and one of the surprising outcomes from that was that big systems are by, uh, by far very seldom uh, in the world and that actually a lot of big enterprises have got lots of small databases uh, and that the size of databases actually doesn't change much over time. Uh, if you've got uh, a company that's got 100 million customers, that's actually not a very big database. It sounds like it would be, but it will actually, these days, fit quite nicely on your laptop. So actually, 99% of databases are really in the small category. And uh, the main problems uh, with database turn out to be, actually, the problems of integrating all these different databases together and the overall cost of integrating systems. So the, uh, the priorities and solutions that I've been working towards over the years with Postgres is to build uh, a low-cost database solution, um, but also one that uh, supports SQL, but with a variety of data models, not just relational. Uh, one thing that's been very important to me in my work was to m minimize the locking uh, that these systems use so that we can get true high availability, not just high availability uh, because it supports a standby node, but actually high availability in the sense that we're uh, giving you access to your data all of the time, not just some of the time. Um, but an important thing to explain is that what we've been doing with Postgres is addressing the large uh, or the larger number of smaller systems as our first priority. So if you're thinking, why has Postgres not been progressing with distributed systems? It's because there's a whole bunch of stuff that we need to address first. Uh, and I'll explain some of the things that we've been doing there. Um, but really, in terms of priorities, actually, uh, given that 99% of databases are fairly small, that's where uh, our thinking has been. It's not where it's going to be, but it, it's where it has been. <clears throat> a couple of cool features, uh, just to mention about Postgres. Um, nearest neighbor searching using an index is about 10 times faster uh, than doing it any other way. Uh, and that's been supported for about four years now. Uh, true theoretical serializability. Postgres was the first system to implement that. A couple of cool things coming up. Um, some of you aren't using 9.4 yet, but uh, JSONB is a, a new data type that allows you to uh, store JSON data in a compressed form while uh, allowing it to still be indexed. Um, Postgres 9.5, uh, that's the syntax for a new sampling command. And what that means is 
no matter how big the customer's table is, run a scan against it that will return an answer in two seconds. Okay? So it doesn't matter how big that table is, we sample it so that it returns it in two seconds. Okay? Now, I think that's uh, one, of the, one of the more important things in 9.5, but it is one of the largest releases that we've done, so there's a lot of other cool things too. But I'm not really here to, to hit you with that. Um, one of the things that uh, I hear said is that relational databases only do ACID, and that's the only way to, uh, to think about your data. Well, for quite a few years now, we've supported uh, a parameter called synchronous commit, which allows you to specify um, uh, the level of performance and reliability that you would like for your application. It's a user-settable uh, option that you can set on a per-transaction basis if you want. So if one transaction is important and another isn't, you can put uh, high reliability on the important transaction, but not on the other ones. Okay? And you can mix that all together in a single workload. The interesting thing about this feature was that <coughs> um, I was at a party um, in uh, a different uh, city other than Paris, and um, <coughs> while uh, drunk, this guy was telling me uh, all of the good things about MongoDB, which I was very interested in. And uh, <coughs> uh, he was obviously very drunk, but uh, he said to me, and the best thing about MongoDB is it's got this feature where you can control the performance and the reliability. And I went, ah, ah, okay. So that would be the feature that Postgres has had for four years. Ah, okay, cool. So, <clears throat> and the funniest thing was that the, uh, the guy had been introduced to me by somebody that knew that I'd written this feature, and he just wanted to see my face when this guy told me. <laughs> so, so two, two laughs at once there. So, um, distributed database. Now, I have to say, I was scarred by my initial uh, involvement with Oracle Rack. Uh, how many users of Oracle Rack are there? Okay, good. <laughs> <coughs> Um, it took 10 years to build that with performance, and uh, unfortunately, it uh, is a sort of lesson of how not to build distributed systems. Uh, and so you'll notice that almost every other system that's come after that uh, did not use distributed shared memory, okay? Um, uh, you'll see that we're all using shared nothing approaches. So there's a good reason for that. Uh, and I do have to say scarred by that. <coughs> So what have we been doing in, in Postgres? Well, there's a whole list of distributed systems features that we've been building. We've actually been building this list for 10 years now. Uh, so it's taken us 10 years to build this. Why haven't you cracked right scalability yet, guys? What's the matter with you? Why are you so slow? Everybody else has got it. Well, <clears throat> there's a number of things along the way that we've build, uh, been building. We just released uh, multi-master scalability uh, this year, uh, and we're just starting the project to, uh, to put right scalability in place. But that's building upon three years of distributed systems um, infrastructure work. So we're not actually expecting it to take too much longer now before we've got uh, right scalable Postgres. Massively parallel query will take another couple of years on top of that. Uh, so there is a, a, a roadmap extending for the next few years that will cover these things. But just to say, uh, right scalability is coming, it's inevitable. There's uh, at least three different groups working on that, uh, and uh, they are going to succeed. So that's, that's good news. Um, so uh, what I'd like to do is to just summarise some of the things uh, that we've got in Postgres now um, and uh, where they've come from. So Postgres supports multiple data models. If you didn't get that from what I said earlier, we support schemaless in that you can have JSON or XML data in your systems. If you want relational, obviously we support that. Um, 
we also support things like arrays and record types uh, that allow you to have quite complex denormalized structures if that's what you would like, okay? And because SQL also supports recursive queries, it's possible to uh, construct uh, uh, basically a, a tree uh, shaped database that allows you to have connected data and you can search that connected tree of data. Um, we support ACID, obviously that's what everybody says, uh, but we also support more relaxed approaches. And what you'll see coming is that uh, we support consistency on a single node, but also eventual consistency across multiple nodes. Um, but the, the idea here is that we're supporting a single code base from very small databases up to very large databases. Uh, and that means that if you're writing an application against Postgres, then that application will scale. What I would like to say, though, is when people keep asking me, how about this, how about that type of architecture, it is not important to me, okay? For me, architecture is an option, it's not a battleground, okay? If we implement one particular architecture ahead of another, that is not a preference, it's just a sequence of activity. It's a, a prioritization of effort towards what we think people need. Um, but the eventual outcome, we hope, is that we'll be able to support all of these different things as options. So what I'd like you to see Postgres as is not a relational database, but actually a multi-model database that's a, a base layer for your data systems, not just a database. Conclusions, uh, yes, QL, okay? Not no, no SQL, but yes, QL, okay? Uh, and why standards and optimizability, okay? Um, you can implement SQL a lot of different ways, but it's, it's a good language that's actually stood the test of time. Uh, God, how many times have I said I've hated it, though? Yeah, I, I'm there with you, yeah? But, um, but the, the alter what you've got to look at is what is the alternative? Uh, and that's actually worse in a lot of cases. So we want database systems of the future to support lots of options. We don't want to be constrained by particular people's thinking on which data model we should use or which particular architecture you should use, okay? I never, ever want to have an argument with somebody about whether we're using, um, you know, eager materialization or lazy materialization or something like that, okay? It, it, it should be your choice, and that's what we're working towards uh, to, to give everybody the choices that they, they want. Um, some... Um, thoughts really over a long period of time. Uh, work well with others. Uh, it's a pithy statement, uh, but whatever software you're writing, uh, your software will have to communicate with other people's systems at some point. So if you imagine that uh, you're doing something uh, brilliant, then the outcome of that brilliance will be you're going to need to integrate with other people. Okay? So Try to act well with other people. Create value from your data. Uh, that was one of the first things I learnt working with databases and has stayed with me for my whole career. The reason I, I spent a whole career doing databases is uh, we, at one point, uh, managed to save, uh, quite early in my career, uh, save a million pounds uh, as a result of some database queries. And I, and I realised then that... Um, that working with databases and trying to extract value for business or other purposes is, is really important. And um, we can move the world forwards. Uh, there's, there's a number of different applications that can genuinely change the way that we view the world. And reducing the cost of data processing is allowing us to lead better lives. If you think about how we all got here today, on trains or, uh, or by plane. Uh, all of those systems are all controlled by large databases that are processing all those transactions. 
perhaps you arrived in a car. Well, we're not that far away from databases being big enough and cheap enough to track individual cars as they go through a city, uh, optimizing the route that each of us will take dynamically. And that's all going to happen because of database technology. Yes, it's going to uh, it's going to happen because of other uh, other technology as well. But it's actually database technology that's uh, that's allowing us to keep track of important information as it flows through the world. So, uh, if you're working on alternative database technology, then um, please, good luck to you. Um, it's a big world and. There's many different approaches. We need to find new ways of doing things constantly, and uh, we'll feed back uh, from each other. So it doesn't matter if you're not using Postgres now or you're not helping build Postgres. That's fine by me. Uh, we're all eventually going to work together uh, on something. We just don't know exactly where yet. So, And, uh, of course, persistence is everything. So keep going. And uh, I don't know how we are for time, but uh, that's it, basically. So I think Sylvain wanted to ask me some difficult questions about Postgres, and I'm sure there's some uh, ones that you'd like to uh, pick me up on as well. Um, my email address is there if you want to berate me, uh, or, or you can uh, uh, grab me by the throat and shake me uh, somewhere outside if, we, uh, if we're not doing the right things for you. So... Um, where's the man? <laughs>